to local targets. My name is Peter Richard Conte. I'm the principal oilist here at Longwood and also ground corn oils at the bottom of the Oregon Macy's Center City for the Network. And this is the Longwood Oregon. That's quite a sound you hear. This organ was built in 1929 and 1930 by the Aeolian Organ Company from Garwood, New Jersey. They built the last great symphonic organs from that period. The organ has over 10,000 pipes, 10,010 to be exact, and weighs 55 tons. Pipes range in size from about the size of a pencil with my little finger to over 32 feet in length. And here's what those extremes sound like. Here's some pipes that are about the size of a pencil. And here are some pipes that are quite literally the size of a tree. They stand 32 feet in length. Those are wooded metal pipes. Uh, flu pipes. Here are some pipes that sort of sound like a, an overgrown bullfrog. Also 32 feet long, that's the bum bottom. There are two ways to control volume on a pipe organ. You can add stops by hand to make the organ louder. Or I can control the volume using Venetian blinds, which you cannot see, but there's large wooden Venetian blinds behind the fabric. And I can shut down the entire organ like a caged tiger and make it crescendo using the visualized air control by the large gas pumps on the floor. The organ is designed to have various sets of pipes within rooms or chambers, and each of these keyboards controls a certain room of pipes. The choir organ is the quietest of the, of the divisions. The lowest keyboard. The great organ is sort of the, the meat of the instrument. The swell organ also has that incredible ability to growl like that, but as I uh, should say, the subdivisions don't have a whole base. The string organ, the fanfare organ, and the percussion organ float anywhere I like. And here is the string organ, which is one of the real prides of this instrument. Which I put onto the swell keyboard. The solo organ, as you'd imagine, has solo voices. Here is a clarinet. There are many more voices up there as well. And last but not least is the pedal board for my feet, which is a, just a very large keyboard played by my feet. And that controls the low end of the orchestra, the double basses and the tubas. So to control sounds, I can grab things by hand, but to make instantaneous changes, the organ is equipped with things called pistons, both under the keyboard, which is one of the buttons, and also on the feet. And I can set those up in advance to control quick changes of sound. Very useful. The organ has several families of pipes. The, the main organ tone, if you will, is called the diaphragm. Very churchy sounding. The organ also has a physical orchestral palette at its disposal. Here's some lovely flutes. As I mentioned, it's an incredible string organ. One of the color reaches in 
the school. In addition to classical organ tone, this organ also has percussion that have been found on theater organs from the 1920s and 30s to accompany silent films. There we go. Tambourine. Castanets. Triangles. Snare drums. Bass drum. Symbols. It's even a grand piano. And a bomb. These are all real instruments. There's no speakers of any kind. These are actual instruments that you can play. This organ, with this incredible tonal power, is really wonderful for orchestral transcriptions, which Pierre Dupont was especially fond of. The organ at one point had an automated role player with old walls that were punched in paper. Now, you have a computer that not only plays those old organs, but also records live performances for the player. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and have a wonderful day here at Library Academies. <laughs>
on some because the, the volume is controlled actually, as I think he said, with, by the line. So as they open up more, it'll be louder. And you can probably see it at times with there'll be more of a light behind the walls because it's opening. Plus, this one, if it gets going, the walls start vibrating. This one's vibrating here.